Now that our player is moving and rotating, we are going to make him jump and sprint. But before we do that, let us create all the variables that we are going to need for our character. So as you can see here on the left side, here you have these variables. You can click on the plus button over here to start creating the variable. So I'm going to click on the plus button and the first variable that we need is going to be our sprint speed, which is, well, the speed of a sprint. And you can click either here so either here on this icon over here, or you can click over here on the drop down list to select the type of the variable you want this to be. And this is going to be a float. So you're going to select a float. So again, either here and select the float or here and select a float. So then I'm going to click on the plus button. And again, this is going to be our walk speed. We are also going to have here, click on it. So click on the variable and I'm going to call this one aiming down sights like this, but I am going to add an exclamation mark at the end because I'm asking a question or you're aiming down the sights. And this is going to be a Boolean. So this one is a Boolean. Click on the plus button again. And the next variable is going to be aim, walk, speed. And this one is going to be a float. So click on and create a float. Again, click here on the variable. And this one is going to be LMB pressed, which is left mouse button press. This is going to indicate with the Boolean is going to be either true or false, indicating if it's going to be pressed or not. We are also going to have here fire rate, which is the fire rate by which we are going to shoot. This is going to be a bool or a Boolean offload, excuse me. Click on the plus button. This is going to be damage. It is going to be float. We are also going to click here and we're going to say can shoot. This is going to be a Boolean and select it over here. So select the bool. We are also going to have here, click on the plus button. This is going to be max ammo and the ammo is going to be an integer. So click on the icon and select integer like this or click on the drop down list over here and select an integer. We are also going to have current ammo. So current ammo also, it's going to be an integer, which is going to denote the current ammo, the current, well, ammo value or count that we have. We are also going to have a max health. So here, max health, which is going to determine the maximum health. This is going to be a float, by the way. So go over here and select the float, click on the plus button again, and this is going to be our health like this. And lastly, we are going to have a kill counter. So kill counter, which is going to denote how many enemies we have killed. And this is going to be an integer. Now, before we proceed, we are going to add some default values. So select the print, the sprint speed and click on the icon here for the eye to make it visible and editable, as you can see over here. And let me just compile and save. And now we will have here a value, the default one that we can set, which is right over here, as you can see where I'm drawing. So I'm going to call this one or set the value to 700. The walk speed, so select it, also click on the eye icon, make it visible. The walk speed is going to be 400. Aiming down sight is going to be false by default, so we're not going to touch anything. Aim walk speed, that value, so select it, and it is going to be 300 by default. Left mouse button by default is not pressed until we press it, so we're not going to touch that. Fire rate is going to be 0.2, so we are going to be able to shoot every 0.2 of a second. We are not going to be able to shoot like crazy, you know, like every single second. Also, select the damage. It is going to be 50, so the value for the damage is going to be equal to 50. Can shoot by default will be true, because when we start the game, we will be able to shoot by default max ammo is going to be 30 so we're going to have 30 inside of our max ammo and the current ammo is also going to be 30 so the default value when we start our game is going to be 30 and by the rate by the rate by the way fire rate and damage make sure they have this eye check because they are going to be well visible also for the maximum ammo we're going to check it so check the eye the maximum health is going to be 100. So over here, I'm going to say 100. Check the eye because I want it to be visible. And the current health, so select the current health, it is going to be equal to 100. And kill count, we are not going to touch that because, well, we didn't can kill any of our enemies. So again, we have the sprint speed, walk speed, aim, walk speed, fire rate, damage, and max health and health who are floats. 
We have the kill counter, current ammo and maximum ammo who are integers and we have can shoot, left mouse button press and aiming down sights which are booleans. And you, sell, you saw the default values that I set up for them. You can also rewind the video and see all these values. So now we can continue with our game. The first thing that we want is the jump. And here we are, we have the action mapping jump. It's there by default. So we have it space bar. So when we press the space bar, we are going to do wonders. So here I'm going to right click and I'm going to filter for the, well, jump. Simply say here, jump. And we want the action event. This is the one that we want. So we want the action event. And when it's pressed, what I want to do, I first want to go inside of a branch, which is an if else statement. So the condition for the branch is going to be equal to this aiming down sights and we are going to get it. So when you drag it over here, let me just delete it. So aiming down sights, I'm going to drag it and I'm not going to set it. I'm going to get the value. So I'm going to plug the value over here for the condition. And if it is true, so if the value for the condition is true, and I'm going to put this over here. So if the value of the aiming down sights is true, so I am going to go over here and I'm going to simply say jump like this, you see? And then we will be able to jump or actually, excuse me, if it's false, excuse me, not true. So if it's false, because if we are aiming, we will not be able to jump. So if we are aiming, we will not be able to jump. So if the aiming down signs is false, we are going to jump. Otherwise here, I'm going to say stop jumping like this. So click on stop jumping. And that is when we release our button. So when we press the button, we are going to jump. When we release it, we are going to stop jumping. And I'm going to save compile, click compile and hit save. And if I go back now in the third person and if I hit the play button now, if I press space, you will see that our game character is jumping. When I release it, he is going to start to fall down. That doesn't mean that if I hold the jump button, he is going to start moving up. No. So simply like this, you see, jumping, jumping and jumping. So you see over here, jumpy, jumpy, jump. Now when we start adding our animation, it is going to be, well, much more, uh, smoother, better, prettier, however you want to call it. But yeah, anyways, you see the effect. So when we press jump, he will jump in. We all did all that with, well, simply by pressing space and detecting if we are aiming. So if we're not aiming, we will jump. Otherwise we will not jump. And I'm going to select all of these, create a comment. And here I'm going to say jump, and this is for jumping. So compile and save. And now we are going to sprint. Now, in order to sprint here, we do need to set our sprint, well, input action. So which is over here and inside of our, let me just remove this over here. We don't have it by default because we selected the third person project. We didn't select the first person. So under action mappings. So actually, is it under action mappings? The sprint is under, yeah, under action mappings, not axis. So not under axis mappings, it's under action mapping. So click it over here and I'm going to call this one sprint. So S P R I N T and we are going to press the left shift in order to sprint. So when we press the left shift, we will start sprinting and this is automatically saved. So we don't need to do anything, but here we are going to right click and I'm simply going to filter for sprint like this. And here we are input action events. We have sprint and here it is. So here is the sprint. What are we going to do when we start sprinting? Well, first of all, when we press the button, we are going to go in a branch, which is an if else statement, as you can see over here. And the condition again for the if else statement is going to be our aiming down sign. So drag the variable over here and get it. And here, plug it into the value. So let me just go and plug it inside of the value. Because if we are sprinting, we will not be able to, we will not be, if we are aiming, excuse me, we will not be able to sprint. Now we do need to get this character movement, which is over here. You see it's right here where the components are. I have just circled it, the character movement. So we need to take it and put it over here. So get the character movement so that we can get his speed and so on and so forth. So aiming down sights, if it is false, what we are going to do? Well, here I'm going to move it. So drag this node from here and we are going to set the max speed. So that is actually from the character movement. So here we are going to say set and we're going to say max walk speed. You see, set the max walk speed 
and plug this from the false over here. And what is the maximum walk speed? This is the value over here. We can put it manually. So you can put here some kind of value that you want or because we have the sprint speed, it's over here. I can simply drag it. We created it. We added a default value. I can plug in the sprint speed, which will set the default sprint speed inside. Now I'm going to take the character movement and I'm going to copy and paste it. So control C, control V, because from it, I'm going to take this, something that is called orient to rotation. So set orient rotation to movement. And I'm going to drag this over here. And what is this orient rotation to move? Well, it will be better for us to see instead of me explaining it. So I'm going to check here and I'm going to say set orient rotation to move. Basically, when we move, the character is going to rotate towards the movement. He's going to rotate. And when I say towards the movement, I mean the movement direction. So if we are moving to the left side, he will rotate to the left side. And here, I'm going to take again, so drag from here and I'm going to say set use controller. Yeah, well, actually we do need to take it from the, so here set, come on, click on the search and I'm going to say use controller. Yeah, controller. Yeah. And here it is. So we need to set use controller. Yeah. Input. And here I'm going to click on this or connect these nodes to nodes, not nodes, connect these nodes together. And this is going to be unchecked. And here I'm going to copy and paste this. And I'm going to put this over here and plug in the target, which is our character controller. And here I'm going to uncheck the orient rotation to movement. And here I'm going to also copy and paste this. So use controller yaw. And here I'm going to check. So now that we are using yaw input. Now here going back, when we release the button, what do we want to do? Well, again, I'm going to copy and paste the walk speed and I'm going to plug in the character movement and I'm going to go here under release. So when we release the button, we are going to set the walk speed to the walk speed. So I'm going to drag the walk speed, get it over here and I am going to set it like this and then plug in this node inside of this node. And here we're going to set the orient rotation to movement to false because now that we are not sprinting anymore, we do not want to rotate the character in the direction where he is moving. And we're going to use the controller yaw rotation, which is basically going to use the yaw rotation to well, rotate him left and right. Now, before we test this out, I'm also going to create here a custom event. So I'm going to right click here and create a custom event like this. So simply type custom event and click on it. And I'm going to call this one unsprint event. What is an unsprint event? Well, simply we're going to plug it in over here, which basically means when we call this event, we are going to stop sprinting. What does that mean? Well, it means when we, if we are sprinting and we start aiming at the same time, well, well we cannot aim and sprint. So we are going to call this on sprint event, which is going to do the following. It is going to call here to set the maximum walk speed from our character movement to the walk speed. And then we're simply going to set the orient rotation to movement to false and set the use controller rotation. Yeah. So compile and save that. And if I go back here now, and if I run the game, if I'm moving right regularly, so WSD, nothing is happening. If I start holding shift, you see, I'm going to move faster, but notice now I'm also, you see how the character is rotating. This is that orient rotation to movement. If I go back, this is that orient rotation to movement. It will basically rotate the character in the direction where we are moving. Pay attention again, I'm holding shift and now we are sprinting, but pay attention now. You see, I'm moving backwards now I'm moving like this. If I release the button, if I release the shift automatically, he is shifted where he is shifted to look forward. Why? Well, because now we are setting that we are using controller rotation. Yeah, this is what we are doing. So play again and let's go over here. And if I try to move, notice now I'm not holding shift and I'm moving backwards. This is how it looks like. But if I press shift, pay attention, I'm going to press shift and move backwards. He's rotating backwards, you see. And of course, if I move to the left, he's rotating left, move to the right, rotating left. If I release shift, you see 
he simply starts to phase forward. So again, just briefly what this here is, and I'm not going to explain this here because this here is clear, but the spring thing, and I'm going to take all, all of all this, so select it all, and move it a little bit down, and right click on it and create a comment, and this is for our sprint. So what's happening here is that when we press the sprint, which is the left shift button, so when we press it, we're going to go into the branch, which is either true or false, and we, and when I say branch, this is an if statement that will check a condition and the condition is aiming down signs. So when we aim, we are not going to be able to sprint. So if we are not aiming, if the condition is false, then we're going to set the maximum walk speed of the character movement to the sprint speed, which will start sprinting or make the character sprint. When that happens, we want to rotate the character towards the movement direction. So we're going to set orient rotation to movement to true. And we're going to set use controller rotation yaw to unchecked because we don't want to be controlled by the yaw rotation. And here when we release a button, we are going to set here the maximum walk speed of the character movement to the walk speed and set the orient rotation to movement to false and use control rotation yaw to true and voila, this is everything we are doing to start sprinting and fire here from us to See you guys in the next video.